Hey, what's up, fellas? We got some really cool stuff going on in this video. First of all, we're supercharging this plate burner. We're going to bring it up from 38 kilowatts to as high as possible. We get it above 50 kilowatts in this video, but we're going to shoot for 250, if you can believe that. The second cool thing we're going to be looking at in this video is the subject of monotube boiler calcium and lime buildup. How long can you run a monotube boiler on hard water before it clogs up? And what does it look like when you chop one in half after it's been running for 21 hours on straight hard water? All right, fellas, so this is what the boiler looked like before we did anything to it. This is what it looked like when we sent it off to Ken. It turns out 38 kilowatts is not enough power for his autoclave, so we gotta boost the power of this thing like five-fold easy. So it's been running a lot longer than what we saw in the first test in this video but this is actually only 38 kilowatts. It's less power than what we just seen, but we're gonna kick this thing up way higher than this. All right, fellas, so here's a boiler that I sent to Ken a while back, and me and him discussed hooking it up to a water softener and a reverse osmosis machine in tandem. But we also talked about the prospect of just cleaning it out after every 12 hours or so. So that's what we've decided to try, and we didn't know how long you could run it before you needed to clean it out with CLR or boiler scale remover. So what we've come up with is 21 hours before the thing clogs up completely. So we're going to chop this thing in half and take a look and see what the clogging looks like and where it's at. All right, fellas, so we got some welds to cut here because we just want to take the burner out, chop the coils off of it, and we're going to do some things to increase the power. But I want to share a little tip. These diamond metal cutting blades are awesome for cutting welds. They're far better than your regular cutting disc for this particular job. This, she's a goner anyway. Okay. Okay, fellas, so essentially the boiler clogged up and the burner just burnt the heck out of the thing. Melted the brass fittings off and everything. We saw this coming. We just didn't know how long it would take. So this is one of those kill shot experiments. All right. Here's the first part of it. Interestingly enough, the most clogging appeared in this portion. Which as you can see, that is clogged completely closed. And we might have even vitrified some of that buildup from the intense heat that melted the brass fitting off of this. Oh, got a little water running out of there. So, this was positioned right here. And connected directly to this preheat coil. Which we will be getting a better look at. Now, interestingly enough, there's almost no buildup on these coils here. I'm half tempted to just, on this particular style of burner boiler, not even use the quarter inch line anymore, just for the added benefits of that. So that is very cool. So a large portion of the boiler does good. After the steam leaves this section, it goes up to this top coil here, which you can see its intake, which is connected like this. And that connected to this unit here, right on this spot. So, by then, most of the hardness had dropped out. That appears completely clogged. Completely clogged. So, 21 hours in is the approximate time it took to do this. We knew this was going to happen, just not if we could get a full day run before we cleaned it. 
also need to point it out, guys, that I ran it here at my house, which also has very hard water, for the better part of an hour and a half or so, maybe two hours, tinkering around with the thing, getting it dialed in. So it could have potentially taken up to 23 hours for the thing to finally clog itself up. All right, guys, so we know that the efficiency loss over time is huge, but Ken was able to run this thing for 12 hours. It brought his process down from 16 hours to 12 hours, and we can do way better. So if we run this thing on super high power for eight hours and we flush it out, or if we just use a water treatment system, then we're gonna be better off. Look at that there, that's like two millimeters of buildup in 20 hours or so. So it's safe to run this thing for 12 hours and then flush it out with CLR, I presume but I don't recommend that. We need to stick with the water treatment plan that we had because I don't like the loss of efficiency we would observe with this type of buildup. That's pretty cool looking, but also damaging. Now it is kind of a, a spongy material where you could pump high pressure water through it looking like that, I, just a little bit it seems. Maybe not, but water was still passing through it a little bit in some of these spots you could tell. Kind of hard to get a good zoom on this, but that's completely clogged. That may have vitrified a little bit also from the intense heat, but I doubt it. All right, guys, so on the bottom of this boiler, it has a preheat coil. That's where the water is first introduced into the system, and it's preheated. And there is no buildup in this preheat coil. It seems to me that the crystallization process takes place at a preferred temperature of about 200 some degrees. Now there's a little bit of buildup right there. Nowhere near what we were seeing everywhere else. It does have a little bit, I take that back. You can see there where I've cut through with the plasma torch. But there is nothing significant to see. This is the test setup. This is just a down and dirty test. That's the pile of boiler coil right there. Now, we got to increase the power of this boiler from 36 to 40,000 watts to, I'm trying to hit 250,000 watts here at least, a bare minimum. I don't think we can do it with this spud though. So we weighed the tank. I'm just using a valve, no regulator. When you're running this kind of flow rate, regulators are out of the question anyway. You eventually lose bottle pressure. So you might as well just have a valve anyway. So let's check this out. This is a plate burner that's been turbocharged, or should I say supercharged. Anybody who is just hardcore into this build, this is the GoPro footage in its entirety of this test. So, bon appetit. <laughs> 